about a pirate's life and what it's like on a ship. Are you all ready to be inscripted into a pirate's life? I matey, I matey. Pirate's life, okay, no trespassing, you will rock the, walk the plank. Pirates were really interested in four things, terror, treasure, gold, and glory. Now, a pirate's life was not very long, but they figured that they were, if they were going to work, they might as well work for themselves instead of working for a government because if they were working to make a rich man richer, they had a really crazy life to look forward to. Usually pirates lived a couple of years That was once they started being a pirate. That was about all because they ended up being hung or they would be tarred and feathered or they would be killed in battle. At one time throughout the Caribbean, there were over 4,000 pirates, and on any pirate ship, there would be as many as 4,000 rats. So a pirate's life was not that, that uh, glorious, as we were talking yesterday about being like a rock star. But the glory part is they really liked being famous. If you became a pirate, and you were a good pirate, you really got a name for yourself. Now, Captain Kidd, his piracy was only one year long. He started in New York. He sailed actually to Madagascar. And the interesting, funny thing about Captain Kidd is he was hired by England to go capture the pirates. But when he got on his ship, he realized that his crew, they weren't tough enough. So he stopped in a harbor and he picked up the most ruthless people he could find. They were cutthroats, they were murderers. And of course, as soon as they got out to sea, they wanted to mutiny because they were cutthroats and mutineers and they were robbers, they were sea robbers. He didn't want to do this. He wanted to stay just like the English wanted to do and find the pirates. Well, what happened is his crew said, no, we're going to attack the ship. He attacked the ship. It was filled with all kinds of, of plunder, wonderful gold, tons of spices. He thought, I like this. Why should I give 50% to, uh, to England? So instead, he stole the ship. He took his cutthroat crew, and he attacked an English ship. So, from the, ink, uh, the, the um, East Indy Company. Now, he thought he could fool England when he got back. He thought he could fool the people. He had to go back to New York and give them the 50% of whatever. He thought he could fool them and say, oh, all of this was from pirates. But when he got back, he found out that uh, all the, his plunder was really from the East Indy, the English companies that were operating in India. And instead, they took him into to England. They actually they sent him over there. They wanted to hang him, but he had a horrible death. The rope broke three times when they tried to hang him. They finally got him hung, and then they tarred his body, set it on fire, and hung it across the Thames so that any other pirateer, privateer who wanted to turn pirate would know that this wasn't so great. But in the meantime, in that one year that he was plundering, he had a lot of glory and he was considered quite the swashbuckler. And of course, we know the tales of Blackbeard and Black Bart and Calico Jack. The weapons of any pirate. The most important weapon, as I said, was the cutlass. It was the smallest. It came in different shapes. A cutlass like the one that I have here, my cutlass. Ahoy. Or you had the, the straight cutlasses, and they were, they were short, could be used under the decks, as I said previously, and they could be, instantly would be able to cut down another pirate or another person on the ship. The other thing they loved were the boarding axes. They needed the boarding axes in order 
to, uh, they put their grappling hooks over and then their boarding axes could actually go into the wood of the ship and then they would be able to get onto the ship and they could, they could also hook onto the rigging. They had a matchlock musket and a musketoon. Uh, the musketoons, they say, were the lightest of them, but the musketoon still weighed anywhere from 9 to 15 pounds, where the musket would be somewhere around 25 pounds, and the pistol could be 9 to 15 pounds. And as I said earlier, the pistol had one shot. You could reload if you had time, but in a battle there was no time. So you took your one shot, and then you used the pistol to hit the person over the head or to use it as a, as just to batter them. And then, of course, daggers. Now, it's said that Blackbeard always kept at least six daggers on him, a sword, a cutlass, a revolver, and a musketoon. So he must have weighed, you know, 300 pounds of weapons. Black Bart always had four revolver, uh, four pistols on him, and at least three cutlasses and daggers. They would have them in their boots. They would have them in, in their belts. They would have them hooked onto their chest belts. Wherever they could put a weapon, they had it. If they could hide one in their hat, they would have it. The more weapons you had, the longer you probably could survive. We also had the cannons and the, and the swivel cannons, and the, the forerunner of a grenade was called a granado. And the granado, it just had shot in it, and so they would roll these big heavy things onto the ship, and there would be a rather mini explosion. But if it was a wooden ship, sometimes that would cause the fire, and then everyone would be running, and then the pirates could go in and plunder. But this would be what it would look like when the pirates were coming over with their pistols and their one shot. Now, Blackbeard, who was probably the most famous pirate of all, he was from Bristol, England, Blackbeard, when he actually, they thought he was never going to die. He would light his hair, which his beard and his hair, his locks on fire. And it is said that some ships would actually surrender when they saw that because they knew that he would take no prisoners, that you would, he would kill you if he was allowed to board. But how he was finally killed is that a pistol, he came upon a ship, they, fly, they flew the flag that were the different flags, and then they put up the pirate flag. The two captains shot each other, and Blackbeard missed the captain, but what did him in was another crew member, came up behind him with the cutlass and <laughs> did his neck. So Blackbeard's head was cut off. It was hung by, the, by a hook from the mast of the ship, and there it stayed until it rotted. It's a rather gory. So let's all have an R, matey. Come on, you can do better than that. R, matey. Oh, you, you're, you're worthless pirates there. Our, our favorite pirate here, probably Johnny Depp, right? Okay, in the, it, what were the pirates really? They were, they were brutal. They were brazen. They were ruthless. But they were very, very brave and courageous because many of them were actually good people that were forced into piracy for one reason or another, whether it be, po whether it be pir uh, poverty or that they had to mutiny on a ship or they didn't want to be in the sea life. But their lives were short and they weren't as glorious as they had hoped. The money. You're probably wondering about the money. The pieces of eight. Well, Sir Henry Morgan's treasure has never been found, so maybe you'll find his pieces of eight while you're here in the Caribbean. But there are gold doublons, and then the pieces of eight were silver, and then there were the reales, eight of them equaled one piece of eight. So that would be like, I guess, 10 cents or something close to that, 12 cents, but that's what a reale was. And then there were the escudos, and that equaled, eight of those equaled a doublon. So they were, they were copper, there were silver, there was gold, and this was the booty and the plunder, and there was lots of it in the treasure chests. Treasure and battle, how did they divide the booty up? Well, 
Many of them buried their treasure, as you know. Again, Henry Morgans we have never found. But it was all divided up by those articles, those codes, that we saw earlier in the presentation. However, there were always fights even after that because they would think that they hadn't gotten enough of, of whatever gold or silver. Now, it wasn't just gold and silver and jewelry that they were after. Also, they would take the weapons. If you killed a man in battle, you would have first dubs at his weapons, unless the captain wanted his weapons. So if the captain wanted the weapon, he could get it. Or if your weapon had gotten injured or broken in battle, the captain might assign you a weapon of someone that you had downed. Also, they took slaves. If you captured a ship, it was not uncommon for you to take the slaves, to take those people as your personal slaves, and then take them either on a pirate ship with you, or take them back to one of the colonies and to work on land if you did have a land-based business, if you could call piracy a business. But in any case, from what everything history shows us is that the treasure was divided most of the time according to the codes and articles of piracy. So they did have some kind of ethics to them. Parrots! Do you think, when you think of pirates, do you think of parrots? Yes. Well, that is something that, yes, pirates did have parrots, but it wasn't because of the reason that we think of. Pi the reason pirates had parrots is that pirates liked to mimic the noblemen and the wealthy on the continent of Europe. And when the royalty would start bringing in exotic animals, pirates wanted to imitate that. I told you yesterday in the presentation about rock stars or robbers, how many of the captains of the ships dressed in lovely clothing. They would have their breeches would be in the finest velvets. They would have feather, big feathers, exotic feathers in their caps. They would have patent leather boots with the buckles. They would have royal jackets and lots of jewels on them. Of course, all looted, all stolen. But when they started finding out that the kings and queens were finding these exotic birds and animals, they too wanted them. So many of the pirates that went to South America, when they found parrots, they trained them. They also knew that the parrots, if they could talk, would bring in more money for them. So they would teach them to talk and then sell them to the royals back in Europe. So the pirates were good business people. Now, when it came to animals, the more exotic, the better. They also had monkeys. And they would bring any kind of exotic animal that they thought they could sell to the aristocracy back on the continent. It is said that they would have leopards and they would, when they would go to uh, Africa, because many of the pirates of the Caribbean, once they were chased out of the Caribbean, they went and plundered Africa and they plundered the waters around India. So they were still plundering. If they survived the Caribbean, they plundered elsewhere. But till then, ahoy Meti! Ar Meti! Thank you very much. Yo, 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 a pirate's life for me.